Thank you for watching this week's episode. In real time, we are about to set sail for the Maldives. We're leaving Thailand this week. And on this passage, we want to try to do daily live streams at 12 o'clock Bangkok time. We don't know how long the live streams will go for. We're literally just going to be doing this as a test to see how well our Starlink runs. But 12 o'clock Bangkok time, we will be live streaming. morning I'm out and about on Reback marina boatyard and beautiful island resort all rolled into one since we last saw you Ivan and Rob have been working really hard getting the boat ship shape they have put the starling in a more permanent position Rob has marked the anchor chain with a rainbow system because we don't have a gauge counter so we need to know where 10, 20, 30 meters are. We only got to blue. We didn't get any indigo or violet, violet cable ties. So I'm going to start back to red. Red will be 60 and then orange will be 70. And then yellow will be 80. That's all we need. We've also changed our mast light and deck light because they stopped working about six months ago. No time like the present. And of course, we've also taken advantage of being out of the water to put another layer of antifoul onto the hulls. Although it does only seem like yesterday that we were doing that. Hard at work again, Ivan. You were doing this exact job exactly 12 months ago. Is it? It is indeed. Is it? Absolutely. Cool. You and Ollie. Look at you hard at work. Mm. Can't stop him. Can't stop it. He is unstoppable. But what we're really excited to be sharing with you this week is a brand new boat build. It's a Pontefino 52 sailing catamaran. It's not ours, unfortunately. Wouldn't that be nice? Maybe one day we'll get to crew on it. Clint, our patron, has been brought over from the dark side. Thank you for curing me of my ridiculous obsession with stick boats. Well, I've been into motorboats uh, my whole life, really. Sailing, for me, is something really new. When deciding to seriously pursue crossing oceans and true liveaboard life, it was quickly apparent to me that a boat big enough to cross an ocean was not in my budget. So turning to YouTube, and sailing families, I could only find a couple of families that were living aboard motorboats. And then they typically are just sailing the, the east coast of the United States, perhaps to the Bahamas and down into the Caribbean, Caribbean for our US friends. And YouTube families, the ones that were seriously live aboard and seriously traveling the world, were all in sailboats. So it was a quick realisation that uh, to make that, that uh, dream become a reality, a sailboat was where I'd need to turn to. I heard a few times on sail um, channels, and that is the most important thing about sailing is to have no time and no destination to travel safely across the world or to have one of those to have a destination but no time or time but no destination and that really hit home to me i thought could i comprehend that and it wasn't until first stepping on a boat on a sailboat having the sails up motoring along coming onto a tack and then switching the engines off and it was almost an immediate love i was like seeing your baby for the first time it was, it was just peace and calm. It probably really helped that it was champagne sailing at the time uh, with light winds and no sea. But it was, what I had in my mind of, of sailing being boring was the complete opposite. It was, it was just pure enjoyment, pure enjoyment. So I have ordered a, uh, a new boat 
a new catamaran, a, uh, it's a Portofino 52. It's a uh, aluminium catamaran built in Dubai. Of most priority was the, the, the strength. I'm going to be sailing single-handed, realistically single-handed for quite a, a number of years until Ollie he's four, until he's big enough and old enough to to really assist with the sailing. And so the aluminium's four and a half times um, stronger than, than fiberglass. And it tends to bend and fold rather than punch holes in things. And anyone's nightmare at sea would be to get a hole in their, their boat. And so anything I could do to help reduce that uh, risk was something I was willing to do. Uh, so that was a consideration and that the Portofino brand is a boutique builder that I can fully customise with options. Again, single-handed being a key consideration for thought with systems on the boat. And so redundancies, dual water makers, dual engines, having all points of, of sail come back to my centre cockpit and be built from scratch in the factory without moving to an aftermarket supplier once the boat was built. However, everyone will too, inevitably at some point something will go will go wrong. What's that saying in uh, sailing? It's fixing a boat in glorious destinations. I know how Van Gogh must have felt actually. Or was it Van Gogh? All right, Van Gogh, Van Gogh, you know, sitting here all day long, putting the final strokes. You're putting it on very thick, is that? Yeah, it is thick. This is a special produced uh, brew that's specific for aluminium, um, in this case a, a sail drive, um, because most antifouls have uh, copper in it. I think it's the copper that reacts with the aluminium, causes big problems. It can actually start eating away at the aluminium. So this is a safe product to use with the sail drive. And that is actually the final throws you're witnessing of the two sail drives, done two coats on both sail drives. And we've got into the little nooks and crannies of their thing there. Got right in there. Dab, 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 dab. Also got right up this hole here. Ah, painting up in there. Oh, yep. Just trying to minimize growth. This is the in, one of the intakes for the cooling seawater into the engine. And that's actually my work here is done, Rachel. By the way, happy birthday, Rachel. Happy 35th. Happy birthday to Rachel. There you go. You'll yep. never got you'll never guess what she got for a birthday. She gets to paint the boat antifouling. <laughs> and a packet of Maltesers. Last time we hauled out, as we were doing the final coat on the last day before going into the water, well what happened was we painted it and then the somebody uh, used the sink and water poured down the side of the boat. It left a streak where the antifoul had washed off because it hadn't dried. So we managed to borrow some antifoul from a friend of ours, Don Salthouse. Kia ora. Now, Don had put a magic product in his antifoul that seemed to work very well because we noticed uh, all the gunk that was growing under the hull, but this little stripe of blue grew less stuff on it. And the magic product that he added to his antifoul was what's in this syringe here. I've already used half of it in one of our tins of antifoul. Uh, it's ivermectin. I got it off the local vet. Ivermectin. So on the final pot we have got one more pot and I'm going to put the rest of this in the last pot in the last coat. We're going in this morning. Actually we're going in in about two and a half hours time. So we've got to get busy and get this last coat on. Ivan, how many hours have you done on this particular bit of antifouling this time around? Uh, about eight hours. About eight hours. Robert, well, how many hours have you done? I'm coming up for about ten minutes. Well done. Yeah. So it's really been a 50-50 operation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ivan has proven himself to be better at it than me. I'm a bit more of a Picasso. Come on. You know, that doesn't really Is that Picasso or is that more like a Jack, Jackson Pollock? Mornay. Just... That's a Mornay, isn't it? Is that? I don't know. Some artists use faeces, don't they? 
<laughs> for one through it. The maddest ones do. No, they're, called, they're not called artists, they're called protesters. <laughs> oh, protesters, that's right. <laughs> One of the things I find a little bit concerning watching the boat cruising along the cobbles is the boat swinging when, the, when he stops and starts the boat swings and the forestay is quite close to the big crossbar where the redex on is plenty of half a foot so it, it swings back and forth at the forestay bought a mouse back to the house and it went missing disappeared we couldn't find it we have heard it and then couldn't find it so ah the cage that we caught the rat in came very handy catching this little critter so I've bought it on a lovely little walk far from the boats far from the resort and I'm gonna let it go so as long as it doesn't uh, run after me Mr. Mouse your time is up oh well your time is up us is up you get to live <laughs> let you go go on Sanchez you're free you're free ah no go away go I don't want you on my hand. Mr. Mouse, you are free. There you go. So Mocha won't be happy with what I've done, but Mr. Mouse or possibly Mrs. Mouse, and that was the problem. We didn't want a Mrs. Mouse in the house. Anyway, good deed for the day done. Now the walk home. So we have a little problem on board our boat. We've got a hostage, a stowaway, should we say. A nest has been formed over the last um, day or two that we've only really discovered this morning. Although Ivan saw a leaf at the, on the davit. He said it's a nest and it, well, really? Anyway, it has become a nest and this little, it's a, what, what is it, a snow? It's a sunbird. A sunbird. A painted sunbird or something. Painted sunbird, a female, is making a nest off our davit and it cannot stay. It's a beautiful little thing actually. It's got to go though. I saw that bird earlier in the week. I don't think she was making a nest at that time. I tried to get her on camera because she actually flitted in and out. She must have been casing the joint at the time because I never saw her. She was just literally looking around and she'd fly away and come back in. But it's amazing what she's made. It's, it's really quite beautiful what she's put together there. It seems such a shame that uh, we're now going to have to destroy it mm. or move it, but highly likely she won't use it again. Good morning, Declan. How are you doing? Good. Is it good to be home? Yep. You had a great time in Australia? Yep. Your flying looked amazing. Mm. You love that? Yeah, that was good. Do you see that in your future? I mean, I'd like to. I don't know, I mean, I guess wherever we are, I could look, look into maybe doing a couple of lessons just here and there. <clears throat> I actually should buy a logbook so I can mm. keep track of my hours. Mm, good idea. Also, the other problem with it is pricing, but... Well, that's true. That's a, yeah. Yes, you've picked an expensive yes. hobby. I just won't be able to do it all in one hit. I'd have to do it like one, Over several an years. hour, one month, an hour, another month. Yeah. And Chanel as well? Yep. She's uh, in TAFE, kind of like uni, studying to be a park ranger. Oh, that's really good. Mm. 
Well, it's lovely to have you back on board. We have missed you. We have missed you a lot. There's been so many jobs we've had to do for ourselves. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it looks okay. Yeah, but will she know where it's gone? Oh, are you going to me? Well, I don't think that that's... What about here, Dex? Between these? Here. Then it's less people coming by. Huh? I'd have it a little higher than that, wouldn't you? It's going to be very close to everyone. Well, it's, it's our only hope. We've left Rebec tons of times, but this is probably the last time. Eh? This is probably the last. Ivan, bring us out. Uh, the skipper packs up the line. We don't see that very often, Robert, do we? Yeah. Busy, busy, busy. Yeah. Captain Ivan. Huh? You were captain when Dad was away. Yeah, it's, it's gone to your head. Oh, yeah, how did we go when it was you guys? We only went from Geelong to um, <laughs> Nihan, so it wasn't, I didn't really do anything. Oh, you're so uh, modest. Sorry. You did everything. So, um, what's it called? Selfless? Yeah. yeah. Well. Cleaning hands. Gloves would have been better, but I forgot to put the gloves on. How can you forget to put I don't know. So if you head into town, the whole of Langkawi is a duty-free island and they have all these duty-free shops with ridiculous prices for the alcohol. This litre of absolute is 45 ringgit, which is $10 American, less than 20 uh, New Zealand. That's about $15 New Zealand. Crazy! And Bailey's. Bailey's. Uh, so, oh, okay. no video. Oh, no photos. Out of Rachel, Rob, and Ivan, who's your favourite? Um, Ivan. Ivan is wise, Ivan. Oh, my play with you.